Hi everybody, I'm Axel Wilkinson with another HitFilm video for you. One of the new features in HitFilm 2 Ultimate that has caused lots of excitement and lots of confusion is atomic particles. My goal in this video is just to demystify that effect a bit to get you started experimenting with it. So to start, we need to understand what atomic particles is doing with our layer. So here I'm starting with a plane to which I have added a four point color gradient. Now let's just drag on the atomic particles. You can see the appearance changes a bit, and what is actually happening is that the layer is being divided into a grid of particles. Open the particle placement, then the number of particles, and you can see that the X and Y axis are each divided into 500 segments. Let's reduce those numbers so we can pick out the individual particles more easily. Now it's much more obvious that there is a grid of dots replacing our layer, right? You can see it's the same layer if we turn this off. All the colors of the layer are the same, it's just been divided into a grid of small particles. Now let's open the particle appearance and increase the size of our particles, and it becomes very easy to see the individual particles that are making up the grid that's being created. And that is the underlying concept behind atomic particles. It's taking our layer and dividing it into a grid of particles which we can then manipulate. We can add variety to those particles with the random sliders for the size and opacity, or we could turn those sliders all the way down to get complete uniformity between every particle. But the real strength of atomic particles, and the bit where they start getting fun, comes when we start moving these particles out of their original positions. So to do that, we want to start getting into the fractal controls. Here we can disperse the particles, which kind of explodes the grid, moving each particle out in a random direction. Or we can displace the particles, which warps the plane of particles into funky new shapes. There is also motion built into this effect. If we hit play, you can see how that plane just undulates around there a bit. And we can adjust this movement with the speed control. And in fact, if we set the speed to zero, we can stop the movement entirely. So now when we play it again, none of the particles are moving. So take some time to experiment with the other fractal controls. Make sure you start with the displace and disperse strength, because if neither of those sliders is moved, some of the other fractal controls won't have any effect. So start there, but then just play around and see what results you can come up with. Atomic Particles is a 2D effect but we can use it in conjunction with a 3D point to create 3D behaviors. So let's create a new point, convert it to 3D, and accept our camera. Then back in the atomic particles, go to particle placement, position, and transform from our new point. Now we don't notice any change at first, but now if we select our point and rotate it around the Y axis, our particle plane is now distorting in all three dimensions. Very cool. One more feature to look at to get you started is the audio interaction. We can select any audio layer on our timeline and use it to drive the animation of your atomic particles. So here I've got a song which I'll just drag onto the timeline and then back in the atomic particle controls and we'll select that layer. Now we can use each of these four maps to assign that audio to control a specific property of our atomic particles effect. So I'll assign this first one to particle opacity. Now as we play this track back, notice how what the music is doing directly drives how the atomic particles appear. Okay, now we'll jump back and I'll apply a second map this time I'm going to map the music to the fractal property. Now you can see how the fractal warp applied to the layer instantly changed there. And now that too can be driven by the music. Okay, so hopefully that clarifies how you can take an audio track and apply it into an atomic particle effect. So I'm going to stop right there. Hopefully this quick look is enough to get you started experimenting with the effect, and I encourage you to do so. This is an art, not a science, 
So dive in and see what you can create. Play around, experiment. You might come up with an end result that we've never seen before. So thank you for joining me for this quick overview of the atomic particles effect. And stay tuned because we have lots more videos coming at you in the near future.